Were Chevrolets of the early 60s too popular? By 1963, Chevrolet was hitting home runs with cars like this awesome 409, 425 horsepower Impala convertible. But the trouble was, GM had like over 50% of the market share, and the government was breathing down their necks for violating antitrust laws, and they actually threatened to break the company into tiny little pieces. So Chevrolet was tasked with actually selling less cars. How do you do that? Well, in their case, they started by eliminating all factory-backed racing programs. Nineteen sixty-three Chevrolet NASCAR race cars had already been built for the sixty-three season, so they still ran, but the support from GM was going away. But that didn't make the sixty-three Impala any less of a cool car. Clean cut is a jewel, smooth riding is a jet. Those are the words Chevrolet used to describe the new 1963 Impala. And they were right on the money. Impala has long been the flagship Chevrolet, being offered with all kinds of luxury options to make the car stand out. This one, however, goes the other way. A minimalist version with maximum power and performance. It was built at the Doraville, Georgia plant and fitted with the high compression, dual quad, 425 horsepower 409 V8 engine. And that's normally reserved for the Impala SS or Super Sport. And although this car is super and sporty, it's actually not an SS. In 1963, the Super Sport package could have been added to any Impala, and it was mostly an appearance package. Super Sports had special badging, trim, wheel covers, and bucket seats, and any engine from the straight six up to the 409. And the opposite is also true, meaning you could get the highest output 409 in a non-SS car, like the one we have here. This one features the basic bench seat, no fancy options, and minimal exterior jewelry, but the 409 and the four-speed stick on the floor make you forget all about that other stuff. Power steering, manual drum brakes, and a four-speed gearbox. And unfortunately, our little test track here doesn't allow me to really rip through all the gears. I bet this is a great car on the open highway. Uh, around town, yeah, maybe not as much. with this giant steering wheel and this suspension. Don't be doing any autocross maneuvers, especially with the bench seat, because you're going to be sliding all over the place. Gauges are minimal, with a wide sweeping speedometer and a series of indicator lights for vitals. But we love the in-your-face 7,000 RPM tachometer on the column. The shifter sneaks out around the bench seat and there is no fancy console like the SS cars. Hub-capped 14-inch wheels hide hydraulic drum brakes at all four corners without power assist. Coil spring suspension is comfy, but does not instill a feeling of confidence in the turns. But the 425 horsepower 409 was capable of pushing these big sleds to low 14 second quarter mile times on day one, provided you could get the rear tires to hook up. Pulling out of racing didn't hinder Impala sales as they climbed every year into the mid-60s. And while the exact production numbers of non-SS, 425 horsepower, four-speed 63 convertibles isn't known, it is safe to say you probably won't see another one parked on your local used car lot anytime soon.
You know, at first glance, this unassuming Impala could have been powered by the Wheezy six-cylinder, but that wouldn't have been any fun. We're glad that the Brothers Collection found this undercover SS car and added it to the fold, and uh, we hope you dug it too. You can click that subscribe button to be alerted when our next episode publishes, and we'll see you then on Muscle Car of the Week.